Hi guys, and in today's episode we were supposed to be doing some uh, visual things, but um, I had a few beers and I consider that a bit boring, so uh, instead we're going to add hex signatures with a position to the scanner to increase our detection rate, and just to give you a better, a better method than MD5 to detect files. So we're going to jump straight into that and um, this week I'm giving it the uh, the college try and I'm going to try and narrate this at the same time as as um, filming it. So if this doesn't work, I'm simply going to simply going to go and rewrite the audio over the top. But um, we're going to start off. We're going to go into signatures and we're going to add a new uh, radio button. I think it's called that. Yep. And we're going to drop it right next to our other one that says MD5 short on it slightly chuck it in there and we're going to call it hex pause so it stands for hex hexadecimal signature and with a position and we're also going to need to double click on our add button and we're going to change the code that's behind it so now we need to do a check to see if our signature is an md5 before adding it so Here's our add function, and what we're going to, have to do is we're going to, have to do an if. I think it's MD5. No, I never named it. This is why you need to name things. So we're going to scroll down and not do that. Click on here. MD5 RB radio button. And then we're going to go across to our hex one and we're going to change our hex one whilst we're there to hex pause rb. And we're going to double click on our add again. And we're going to do if md5rb.checked. Um, equals. Do, 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 something's gone wrong here. That's why. There you go. Um, then our sub item is going to equal that, and if hex pos rb dot checked, then we want the sub item to say something different this time. And this time we're going to put hex pos in its place. Right, so that now allows us to add hex pos signatures. Um, so our hex pos, our hex position signature is going to be similar to our MD5 hash signature, where we have the hexadecimal string we're looking for and the position in the file we're looking at. So this way, we're able to rapidly identify a file and. Um, we avoid the obvious downfall of MD5 that if you add zeros to the end, it changes the MD5 hash without actually changing the file. So now we've added that, we can now add MD, we can add hex signatures, which is important for later. So we're now going to go into our, set, our scan engine and we're going to have to do some rearranging here. This is going to be important because we need to be able to use our hex signatures as well. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to check if form one dot database lv dot items dot item, and we're going to give it the item we want which is I, and then we want to go to the position of a sub-object, or a sub-item of 1. This is going to give us, do do do, where have I fucked up? Form 1, I might just want to, ah, yep, yeah, no. Sub-items, that's what I fucked up. Right, so we're going to put a hex, pause, 
Uh, uh, no, 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 we want MD5 to this one. So you have to make sure that it's the same text we put here. This is what the computer is going to check as it runs the program. Right, so we want to check that the signature type, which is stored in subobject 1, is MD5. It equals that. Then we're going to do a begin. We are, if I can put it right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take all of this, and I mean all of it. Uh, yep, all of it. We're going to dump it in here, just there. And then we're going to realign it so that it all looks like it's meant to be there. Like that. And then what we're going to do is after it, here, we're going to do another if function, form1, database, lv, dot items, dot item, give it i, which is our item, Sub items, and we want sub item one again. And this time we're going to look for our other signature. So our other signature is hex pos. Once again, you want to copy this and dump it straight in there to make sure it's the same. And then we're going to do a begin. Now, at this point, we're going to copy this, just this bit in the middle. The, this bit here we're going to edit out, but the rest of it is the same. It's the same for all of it. And I'm also going to fix the loophole, this one. Someone pointed out to me um, over email that there's a hole there. Yes, it only ever reads one was detected. So we'll change that in a minute. But so we're going to need this. And what we're going to do is we are going to leave this like this at the minute, even though this is the line we're going to have to edit in a minute. So we're going to come down here, scroll all the way in, and we're going to start a new function. And this is going to be our hex pos um, function. Now to scan for hex pos, one, we need to know if it is detected or not. So we're going to give it an output of boolean. Simple yes or no, on or off, true or false. And then we're going to add ourselves some variables. All right, the first variable we want is the object, object path, and that's going to be a string. And then the next thing we want is a signature. Signature. And that's also going to be a string, just to keep it simple. And then we're going to want the hex position. So we're going to call that hex pause, and we're going to put integer in there. Integer is always a good way of um, of doing this. Um, it, it, you know, you need to know what line it's on, or you know how far into the code it is in bytes. All right, so. We're going to add a few variables because we're going to need a few variables. The first one we're going to need is our file stream. And for the sake of keeping it simple, I'm going to call it fs. Oh, have I messed up here already? No, it's a t stream. So we'll call it ts. Just to keep it nice and simple, we need an integer of i. What we're going to do here is we're just going to add our integers straight after, I think. Can I be bothered? Do I need them? Not really. Um, I need... I do need some bytes, I'm going to guess. Because we're going to have to read it in bytes to write it back out. Uh, we're going to need a buffer. This is just literally just going to store us a load of shit. And that should do it, I think. Yeah. I'm going to leave it at that. So first of all, we're going to check if the file exists. Always a good place to start. If it doesn't, no point in continuing. And... Why does it not like this today? 
Um, do, 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 do. Mosquitoes is in there. Cough is in there. Have I spelled it correctly? Bio exists. I'm sure I've spelled that correctly. Well, have I? No, I haven't. There's no F. That's what I'm fucking up. So we're going to put our object path in here. It's obviously better, you know, if it does exist. So we're going to put a begin to make sure we don't get there. By default, we want this to return false. So we want to say that the signature doesn't exist. So first line up here, we're going to put false to ensure that our function returns false. If it's not there. So straight off the bat, we're going to do TS equals T stream dot create. Why is my computer not letting me do this today? Doesn't seem to like me. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Okay. I have fucked up here. Right, so we're going to do T file stream dot create. Uh, it's going to want the object path. And the type of read, so read, open read. Yeah, that's it. And we're going to want to set a few things to default straight off the bat. So we want to set i to zero. And then after that, we want to start a try. And in the finally, oops, I got the wrong. And then finally, we want uh, to free our FS, our file stream. We don't want it to continue afterwards. It's not really much point in it. So, off the bat, we're going to go straight and seek the file place we want. So, we're going to do fs.seek. That's going to put us in the right place in the file. So, we want to do hex pos. And then we want to tell it so from beginning. So it knows to start from the beginning of the file. Pretty self explanatory. And then we want to do fs dot pause mission equals to hex pause just to make sure. And then from that point, we're going to start a loop. So from I0 to, we're going to read 2024 bytes, just to make sure that we don't miss our signature. And from here, we want to do uh, fs.read. And we want to read one byte at a time, and we want to change this into hex, and then add it to our buffer. And this probably isn't the best way of doing it, I know that, but, you know, I'm trying to teach people from the basics up. So, what we need to do is we need to do buffer equals buffer plus um, int to hex, but I don't think... It's a default function, or it is. That's nice. And it's going to require the, the byte and how long we want it. So we want it in two, two, we want a byte two. And um, from here, we're now going to check if i equals 1024. 
So we'll know now. Then we want to begin again. We want to open another begin. And at this point is where we're going to check if our signature exists. So hexadecimal or is all AES characters or ASCII characters. I, I'm saying that right. ANSI characters. So we're going to do ANSI pause because we want to know if the position of our string is in there and if it comes back anything other than zero so that tells us it's in there somewhere so we're going to put our signature here signature and then we want to look through our buffer so this is simply taking our signature which is the needle and that's the haystack to look in the buffer is our haystack um, hopefully it comes out. So if it does come out, we want to turn the true, and we want to exit our function. There's no need to be in it no more. Um, la one of the last things we want to do is empty the buffer out. So we should simply do that. Right. Yeah, that looks like it'll work. I can't see why not. Yeah. Right, so we're now going to take our hex function, our hex hand position function. We're going to take it all the way to the top. We're going to dump it in here. And don't click that button, click the save button. And now our scan function has a hex pause. So down here where we where we put our put our little comment tags so that we wouldn't miss it. We're now going to put if hex pause plus so this returns true or false and that, that gives us our if function and it wants the object path which in this function is called file path it then wants the signature or it should want the signature yeah object signature hex position so the signature is going to be we're going to add, have to add another 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 um, piece in for this so we're going to do this we're just going to we're just going to leave it tagged out pretty much we're just going to put empty empties in that pretty much we're going to here and we're going to have I already added this split function in here no nope, we don't have a split function yet so function, no, no, we're going to use a procedure instead. Uh, yeah, yeah, procedure. And we're going to call it split. We're going to call it split for a good reason. Because it's about to split the string we give it. So we're going to give it a, a dilemma. The delimiter is simply what we want it to split by. And this is going to be a string. No, this is going to be a character instead. We only want one. And next, we want the string, which is going to be a string. And last of all, we want a list of strings. So we're going to call that list of strings. So it's actually going to be a T strings. If I can spell it right. And we're going to begin. And then what we want to do is simply list of strings dot. We're going to clear it first because, well, you know, have I messed this up already? List. I forgot the F. Then we're going to do list of strings, and we're going to set our dilemma. So our dilemma equals well dilemma. Not very, uh, not very inspirational, but well, it'll work. I have designed most of this code so that 
you know, you can go through and edit it. Um, mainly, mainly so that you can learn. Because there's no, there's no point in just copying this down. It doesn't get you anywhere. Um, yes, you have a physical copy of it, but at the end of the week, you know, I'm giving out copies of it. So, you know, it, it's your choice. I, I think that, you know, me explaining it might help you get a better understanding of it. Well, I hope it, give, it lets you get a better understanding of it. Um, so here, what we're going to do is, at the start of our scan function, we're going to add a T string. And we're going to call it SIGS. Hmm. Maybe not a T string then. Oh, we missed the SL string. That does help. And we're going to do SIGS equals T strings dot create. Uh, I don't think it wants anything. For some reason, my version of Delphi isn't actually telling me what it wants today. Just for good measure. No, it's not going to tell me. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to do split. We do need to declare split at the top of the page or you can't use it. Jam that in there. And now split's not error. So it wants the delimiter first, which in this case is this. Can't quite remember what the hell it's called, but the two dots we use to separate them. And then it wants our string. Well, our string is going to be form one dot they are database lv dot items dot item uh, give it an item which is i and then sub item sub items of zero. So zero is where our signature is. We want to split that and we're going to use six to put it in. Now if you remember our function down here you can still see we clear the list each time. The function has an inbuilt clear. Every time you call it it will clear the last result. Very useful. And um, yeah so this requires our two two pieces. Our first piece, sig 0, and this one's going to have sig 1. And that way it will split our hexadecimal string and our position in two again. So it lets us take our database where we've added it here. We, uh, we add it together, or we will add it together. And it lets us combine it, uh, take it from one piece and break it back into two pieces again. So as long as our database sub item says hex, hex pos, then it will this functionality bit here will be called. It will split the it will split the signature in half with this in the middle, and then it will call is the hex is there a, this hex string at that position? Right now to fix our number issue. This loom. Right, so we're going to come up here. We're going to simply add infected count as a variable. We're going to put integer in there. We want a number. By default, we're going to put our infected. Oh no, don't do it there. Count to zero. So as the scan function is called, mm, that's not a good plan. Right, what are we going to do? We're going to stick it up here. Uh, we're going to leave it there. 
Right, and you'll see why in a minute. I've just had a uh, an epiphany before I've done it. So what we're going to do is we're not going to set it at all in this function. Because our folder scan folder function uses this same function, it would reset it to zero each time. So we're not going to do it in there. What we're going to do is we're going to stick here infected count equals, oh no, actually, better plan, increase infected count. So we want to increase infected count. Now we're going to copy this and right there no don't do that right there and then what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to do int to string so we're taking our integer which is here and we're turning it into a string which is required to show it in the caption and we're going to put infected count in there now this is going to display whatever this is so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this in bit here because I'm being lazy. We're going to dump it here. And now, every time something gets infected, or every time we detect something infected, it's going to increase it from zero. Now how do we set it to zero? We're going to come back here, and we're going to click on our normal one. We're going to click our scan function. We're going to come here, we're going to put infected count equals zero. Simple as that. As the function, as the scan function is called, regardless of whether you're scanning a folder or a file, it will reset the infected count to zero. That way you don't get no cross cross results from um, the last one, you don't get any shit results, you get to drink beer. Mm -hmm. Right. And that way our infected count gets updated. Uh, another thing someone pointed out, the program freezes and then scans. Yep, it's because we haven't threaded it. We were going to do it, we couldn't be bothered. We will be doing it later. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick a label here, just to please everyone. And we're going to say state. So what's the scanner state? And then we're going to stick another label in here. Stick it just there, line it up lovely, like that. We're going to put idle. You're going to see why I've put idle in a minute. We're now going to come down here and we're going to rename it. Scanner state. That way we can find it in a minute. So just here, just in front of one of these functions, or actually, you know, we're going to put it in with the function. Like that, and we're going to put it begin here, and we're going to do that, and then we're going to put scanner state equals, and you do this in whatever language you're writing this in, scanning. And then just the other side of the function, because this is the function that's going to hold, we're going to write finished. Just like that. This text is going to be displayed before the function is called. This is where it's going to freeze because you're scanning in the same thread as the GUI is running. We will fix that in probably in the next episode. I just thought that I haven't seen a hex scanner. Not on YouTube. A lot of the time these MD5 scanners are written by kids. And I, I want to elevate myself slightly from them. So we have our functionality in, and this is pretty well done. So I'm going to pause the video now. I'm going to go get. I'm going to go make a signature from probably from part putty. I've got a copy of putty on my desktop. We we'll use putty. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to pause the video if I can figure out how to. And pause. All right. And right, so I'm back. I've got my. Uh, let me just see if the camera's on. It is. Right, so I've now got my signature. So we're going to click go. And we instantly get an error. Uh, da, 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 da. Ooh, we forgot this. 
always remember this. It's not a great biggie if it if you forget this, and as you can tell, my Delphi isn't enjoying me at the minute and isn't showing me any hints, so I, you know, I have no choice but to uh, click debug and see what happens. Right, that's a function I accidentally made. Yes, we want to remove that function, we don't want it. And we're still getting errors. Hex pulse. Ah. Right, this is one I've overlooked again. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to do string to int. So we want to take our string value, which is this, and we will turn it back into an integer. Forgot about that. For some reason I'm getting an error here. I don't know why there's an error there. And we're still getting too many parameters. Nope, that's what we're supposed to do there. Too many parameters. Not enough parameters. Right, I'm going to pause the video, figure out where I've gone wrong, and um, I'll be... Right, so, all you crafty people, I forgot to put object here. We're attempting to call the same function again. Whoops. Right. Not enough parameters, see. We forgot to change it further up. Copy the object. Go all the way up here. Dump that there. And now we start getting errors. Because we've got a spelling mistake there. And the spelling mistake still persists up here. There it is. Right. And now this has not needs an object in front of it. Alright, I'm pretty sure that's all of them. Yes, we have some idea. Right, so we're going to go to our database. Our one is already loaded. We're going to we're going to browse a file just for the hell of it. Because I don't actually need it. So, this is what you'd normally get. The signature the size and the MD5 hash. What I need you to do is clear that, clear this, clear this. We're going to call this putty hex pause because it's not a piece of malware, it's putty. Right, and now in my nice text file here, I've got a string and I have a position for it. I just used a hex editor and, uh, you know, just flicked through the file until I found a piece that I liked. Probably not the best idea. Um, usually, most antiviruses use strings that are visible um, to detect them. But um, yeah, uh, you know, I'd, you don't you don't need to. This is this is um, purely to show you how to build one. Um, I'll do videos later on on how to identify malware using hex strings. But uh, we're going to click add. And lo and behold, there is our hex signature. Lovely. We're going to hit save. We're going to save it in our default place, which is going to be hard to find. And many folders. Win32, debug, database. Now, this is something that's going to come a bit weird to some people, but I'm going to actually delete this copy. And I'm going to save it in its place. And I've had I've had a few experiments with this, and um, saving one on top of the other just adds to the list. Right, so we're now going to do scanning a folder, and for the better choice of me, I'm going to scan my desktop, which is not a great idea. There's a lot of folders on here. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is um. I'm going to close that, and we're going to put putty in a folder. So, do 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 do, desktop, we're going to find putty, we're going to copy putty, we're going to come up to our YouTube folder, we're going to dump it in our YouTube folder, 
nice and easy to find. Come back here, we're going to browse to our YouTube folder. Like so. And we're going to select it. And now I'm going to hit scan. And the application will freeze. It will freeze because it's trying to run in the same thread. But, oh no. Where have we got a break? That's not supposed to have happened. Breaking the source code. Break it back. Split stream. Dilemma R. Right. So I'm going to look at this and then figure out what I've done wrong again. Right, so guys, I'm back. As you can see, I've removed the pardon me I've removed the empty buffer my mistake, put it in the wrong place don't really need it, remove it anyway um, that was one of the big problems we were having uh, there was a couple of other spelling mistakes in the background and I had put this in with spaces in and it doesn't need to have spaces in it so we're going to give it a run through and uh, see if it now works so we're going to select our our uh, YouTube folder. We know we know parties in there. We know our SCAR test files in there. So we're going to hit scan and we're going to wait. And it's going to sit idle like this for a little while. We'll change. We'll fix the scanning. You're going to get this every time. It can't access the file because it's running currently. But as you can see, it's detected both files. Unfortunately, it's detected the first, the second, the first file as the second file. A bit annoying. It says clean as well when it's not, and it still says scanning. So, let's fix them quickly. Uh, I am sorry if it, if any of you guys like just watching the end product, but never really been my uh, my way. I'm not really um, prepared with uh, exactly what I want to do, and you know I just see where it takes me. So we're going to add update to both of these, or actually to all of them. And what this is going to do is it's going to stop the it's going to tell the thread it has to update before it continues. That way we'll get our scan and finish. Now to fix our clean thing. Alright, so we're going to come out of that. Somewhere here we've got it as clean. Alright, so scan result equals infected. Now the scan result... Is that the thing on the home page? it is right so what we're going to do is we're going to call update here as well uh, dot update why is it not letting me update ah because that is a string we set the string here. So what we're going to do is form one dot scan result dot update. Same thing. Going to stop the thread. Tell it to update. Come down here. Do the same at this end. Make sure that should do that. Now to fix the problem with our our, our, sig our antivirus name. Well, not with a name, with the name of the signature we're using. So, the signature is added here, as virus name. What we're going to do, we're going to take where it's in this section here, which is the caption. And we're going to put that straight in. Instead. So, where is the virus name determined in this again? Once you get into program, you'll have this same issue. You'll get to a point and you'll think, hello, what am I doing here? So we're going to go form. Now we're going to write a universal function, I think. Uh, do I write one at the minute? No. Right, so we're going to do form one dot database lv dot. Ooh, my hints are back. Items. Item is i dot item. No, we want caption string. 
So that should now give us our correct, our correct um, signature name as well. So let's give this a while and see if it's fixed. We haven't got any errors. Lovely. We've got our signature in there for putty. Quickly grab the files again and select and scan. Right, so it's still coming up with clean, which is a bit bit annoying, but the virus name is correct. Yes, it can't scan us again. Yep. So the signature is still the signature is now correct. It does still say scanning for some reason. Maybe it's still going. Right, let's solve this crappy, crashy issue. So what we're going to do is if file path is the same as param string and it's zero. A in there. So param, uh, param string zero is your file path. So if this is the same as our file path, we want to exit. We don't want to know. You know, it, it's not worth our while scanning ourselves. Right, so let's run it through once more, and it should fix our issues because it sh the function shouldn't crash. We're still scanning, still scanning. I'll tell you what, we're going to stick a few breakpoints. Oh, don't do that. Uh, we're going to come here and our scan function, we're going to stick a breakpoint either side. So there and there. Then up here, there, and there. Don't know why I can't use that one. Using this one down instead. Oh, we can now use it. Right, so these little red dots are source code breakpoints. This is where you don't just randomly list some things, you start creating functions. Yes, remove the function. Right, so these two red dots are going to be where the sh the source code as it's executing is going to stop. It's going to stop for us so that we can see what's going on, not to mention so that we can see when it's finished the function as well. They don't really do anything and once you compile it for publishing they don't work. Right, so we can see that it stopped here. It stopped at scanning. But more importantly, we can now see that the scan function itself has not finished. As soon as it finishes, it will trip the other end. And it's just finished. So we're going to go click yes, and it still says clean. All right, we must have bugged up somewhere. So we're going to come back here, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this, this bit here, the lovely bit that says infected. We're going to copy it to the end, right here. That's not the end. That's the end. We're going to copy it to the end of our function. And then we're going to copy these two bits. So these are our equals that and away we go. And hopefully that is going to fix it for us. Oh no, we have screwed up again before we do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an if function infected count is greater than zero infected count then we're going to hit begin now we're going to drag all of this inside our little begin and then we're going to format it so it looks proper and now we're going to run it and that way if infected is above zero which it should be with protected files then it should say infected and it shouldn't say we're not infected Right, hit scan. We have our source code breakpoint. Wait a few seconds. And a few more seconds. And we've got our other source code breakpoint, and it now says infected. And it says finished. So we have successfully fixed our two bugs. 
So, um, the download for this will be going out probably on the 10th, seven days from now. Um, I'm hoping to get this edited before I go to sleep, but it is now nine o'clock, so I work early morning, so, you know, we'll see what we can do. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you a bit more inspiration. Um, it's been great fun for me. I uh, I enjoy, I, I've enjoyed narrating it as I go, although you do get a lot more of me um, stopping and thinking. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's all part of it. Um, I was, I taught myself coding, so a lot of this can be improved on, will be improved on. In the next episode, we'll be separating the scan engine from the um, thread that it's in so that the scan engine will carry on running and the graphic user interface won't freeze. Um, we might also be adding, say, reports. I haven't decided yet. I kind of wing this each time. You know, I just I pick something I want next and go with it. So, um... I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, comment, like, and subscribe. It it will it will uh, help me greatly. Um, obviously, I'm trying to grow grow the channel slightly, and um, help a lot more people get get access to this information. So um, yeah, please smash the like button, and uh, I'll see you next week.